Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I'm here to advise that police are investigating a death in custody that occurred overnight at Craigmore, where sadly a 32-year-old man has died at that location. The investigation is in its infancy and um, I ask for understanding that there's things that I won't be able to talk about, in particular the identity of the deceased man at this time as uh, we're currently in the process of notifying relatives as to what's occurred. We believe that um, the death in custody is linked to a hit run crash that occurred at Andrews Farm yesterday uh, just before 3pm on Saturday the 3rd of September. At that time police and emergency services were called to St Lawrence Avenue Andrews Farm after reports that a man had been hit by a white Toyota Prado at that location with South Australian registration WWJ662. Following a, a domestic disturbance between a group of people all known to each other at that location. The 26 year old pedestrian uh, was treated at the scene before being taken to the Royal Adelaide Hospital um, in a serious but non life threatening, sorry, in a serious but non life threatening increase. That matter is currently being investigated by Northern District CLB with the assistance of Major Crash Investigation Branch. Just after 9 pm last night, on the 3rd of September, uh, we were called by a member of the public to attend at 5 Karinga Avenue at Craigmore. We were advised at that time that the man that may have been involved in the hit run accident was at that premises and that he was armed with a knife. Police attended the address and on arrival we identified that the Toyota Prado was at the front of the premises and when police got out they could hear a heated argument occurring with inside the premises. We were also told by a witness at that location that there was a violent confrontation occurring inside. Police immediately entered the premises as uh, they believed that there was an imminent threat to life at that location and they loca located two males on the ground in the living room. The deceased man at the time was armed with a knife. Police disarmed him uh, with that knife and he was handcuffed and taken outside of the premises. Sadly, once outside the premises, that man became unresponsive. Um, police then provided medical assistance and gave CPR until SA Ambulance arrived and continued treating the man at that location. Unfortunately, he was uh, pronounced deceased at, at that address. Um, during the incident and during the uh, treatment, the man has actually disclosed that he had self-inflicted injuries, um, which are as a result of what's occurred inside the premises. A 41-year-old man also suffered wounds to his hands and he was taken to the Lyle McEwen Hospital where he received medical treatment. This matter has been determined a death in police custody and Major Crime and Ethical and Professional Standards Branch are investigating the circumstances surrounding uh, both the incidents and in particular the incident at Craigmore. The cause and circumstances of uh, the man's death will be thoroughly investigated there will be an independent and full and comprehensive investigation into that incident and the earlier hit run to identify, identify the links between the two and a report will be provided for the coroner. Um, the nature of the investigation of this type is natural under the circumstances and uh, should someone die in uh, police custody. We're currently seeking anyone that has information or may have witnessed the incident that occurred at the hit run accident at St Lawrence Avenue at Andrews Farm just before 3pm or the incident that occurred at 5 Karinga Avenue at Craigmore. We ask that anyone that may have knowledge of the occupants of the White Toyota Prado uh, South Australian registration WWJ662 that was involved in the hit run, um, if they have knowledge of the occupants of that vehicle between 2pm and 9 p.m. yesterday, we asked those persons to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 000. I'll now take any questions. What was the relationship between the deceased man and the Craig Ball farm man? Okay, the hit run incident. Um, all the persons involved in that incident were known to each other, and then subsequently, when uh, this man has attended at the Craigmore address, he's known to the occupants of that residence as well. So he didn't live there at that Craigmore address. The, the man who died? No, he was known to the uh, people that live at that house. And do we believe, so the Toyota Prado, that was a stolen vehicle? Um, currently we're trying to determine exactly uh, whether that vehicle is or isn't stolen 
and uh, that's that's an early part of the investigation. That will form part of the, the larger investigation. Do you know what the argument was about to have the Craigmore property? Um, it's, it's very early and I won't be commenting on what's actually occurred other than the fact that unfortunately this man has sadly died at that location. The man who died in Craigmore, had he been wanted by police for a number of weeks? Listen, uh, currently, as I said, I'm not going to um, provide any information about other incidents that this man may have been involved in um, because I can't, in, you know, for the dignity of himself and his family, um, we're still notifying next to kin, um, so I'm not going to give anything that may divulge Without his identity. Without detail, though, was he wanted for other matters? I won't be commenting on that. And it was the neighbour that alerted police to the property that there was an argument going on? No. Um, police were advised that the man was at the premises and that the Toyota Prado was there and he was out the front and armed with a knife. Advised so, by who exactly? Yeah, um, an occupant of that house. So another person not involved in the altercation? Yes. Can we go back to the Prado? Yes. You don't know if it's stolen or not? L listen, at the... Wouldn't the registration... Yeah, the, the, the registration check does determine that, um, but we're actually trying to identify where those number plates are from uh, and when they were obtained. Yeah. And that's or not they match the product? Correct. And at this stage, it would suggest that they don't, but we need to make further inquiries to identify, A, whether the Prado is actually stolen and whether those plates, we know they're not actually aligned to that vehicle, yeah. but we need to actually identify where they were sourced from. Okay. And when... Um, police got to the south of Craig War and the pair of them were on the lounge floor. Um, both were obviously still responsive at that stage. Yes, they were. You took the deceased man out the front where, was he bleeding? Was he injured or suddenly he became unresponsive on the front lawn? So what actually happened between the lounge and outside? Yeah, as I said, um, once police arrived, it became aware that that uh, man unfortunately had self-inflicted wounds and it's those wounds that have, uh, and his removal outside is when he has then become unconscious, yeah. and that is when police have immediately rendered assistance to him and commenced CPR. Is it standard practice to handcuff someone who's injured like that? Um, these incidents, and I, I won't go into it in detail, but it's extremely difficult for first responders when they attend. As I said, the man was armed with a knife. Um, he was disarmed. He was then handcuffed and taken out of the front of the premises, that's when he became unresponsive and the police have immediately commenced CPR. So do police believe there are more witnesses that they haven't yet spoken to in relation to both the hit run and the altercation at Craigmore? Yeah, with any of these investigations, we obviously want to investigate the full cause and circumstances of the man's death and the previous incident. Um, it, there's a, about a seven hour gap or a six hour gap between both. And that's why we're seeking witnesses that may know uh, anything about either of those incidents. Have the police been able to question the crate ball man? Is he still in hospital? Or? Uh, he's been treated for his um, injuries, and I can't tell you what his current status is. There was another death in custody back in May in the city. Yes. Um, that was about four months ago. Is there any update on the investigation for that? Uh, no, I won't be commenting on that investigation today. Sorry, going back to Prado again. You, um, calling for people who may be missing a white Toyota Prado to contact? No, we're not. Um, I'm seeking witnesses yeah. that may have seen the white Toyota Prado bearing the number, the number plates. plates that do not match the vehicle. Okay. And are you prepared to say the self-inflicted wounds, were they in the abdomen or the hands or where? No, I won't comment on that. We're all done with that one, everybody. Um, Inspector, we can speak about the uh, Port Mary's death as well. There wasn't anything further on that one? No. no. Okay. There you go, boss. Okay. Um, at about 4.40pm uh, yesterday on Saturday the 3rd of September, uh, Tumby Pay Police were tasked to 107 Chalmers Road, Port Neal, uh, in relation to a triple O call. Um, police and South Australian Ambulance attended that location and we found a deceased male uh, who's aged 66 years. Port Link and CIB have attended that location uh, late yesterday and um, that death has been determined to be suspicious. Last night a 28 year old man from Port Neal was arrested and has now been charged with the murder of the man that was located at that location. 
The charged man will appear in the Port Lincoln Magistrates Court tomorrow. This morning, major crime, forensic response se section and a forensic pathologist uh, have travelled to Port Neal uh, to support Port Lincoln CIB and the, uh, the remote area policing teams that are out there. Um, and at this stage, a, comment, a further comment will be made uh, once we know further because that investigation is in its infancy and uh, the preliminary investigation is currently occurring. Can you tell us how um, the, the two people knew one another, that believe they knew one another? Um, as I said, that investigation is actually in its very, very early stages. We've had members arrive there this morning. Um, we're trying to determine, obviously, the relationships between the persons, and that would be one part that actually is uh, significant in that investigation. And can you tell us how he died? No, not at this time, I can't. What type of injuries he had? Or... No, for operational reasons, as I said, that investigation is in its infancy. Um, we've got members that have arrived there this morning and there's quite a number of inquiries that need to be undertaken before we comment further in relation to the circumstances around yeah. that death. Did he live in Port Neal in the caravan or was he travelling around? Um, the only information to me is I believe that the man uh, resides at the address, but I can't comment further. And uh, did he die in the caravan, is it believed? Um, as I said, the investigations in its preliminary stages and I won't be speaking further around the circumstance till we have further details once both major crime, forensic response and the pathologists have examined um, that scene. What led police, what info led police to the accused? Where was he arrested? Yeah, at this stage, as I said, I won't comment on that easy. Apologies. The um, media statement this morning referred to a welfare check. Was that the triple O call? Yes. So someone's rung police saying you've got a yeah, so as I said, um, Tumby Bay Police were called yep. to attend at that location and it was once they attended that they um, found the man deceased. Was either the victim or the accused already known to police? Um, the investigation, as I said, is in its infancy and I won't be coming at this stage in relation to whether those uh, persons are currently known to police. This is obviously a small community. How tragic is an incident like this in, in a community where people know one another? I think any of these incidents that have occurred um, yesterday, both the ones in the CBD and the ones in the country, are extremely traumatic for not only the first responders, but the families uh, of the persons involved. Um, so that would probably be heightened in a small community where people certainly know each other. And it's Father's Day today. Are you able to tell us, you know, was this man a father? Has the family lost their father? I don't have that information at the present, sorry. All good, everyone? Um, oh, okay. Can I just make a comment that the pedestrian killed in a fatal crash was in the beach overnight? Do you have any details on that? Was the driver speeding? Was there no. As you any, mentioned. any further comments? No. no. Okay.